Robert Orr. Could you give us your name and your title? I am Albert Orr, Chief Judge of the Colville Confederated Tribes. Okay, and when you start, we want you to start with the same thing. Start your name. Oh. Are you ready for me to start? I am Albert Orr, Chief Judge of the Colville Confederated Tribes. I am a member and an enrolled member of the Colville Confederated Tribes. I am 71 years of age and have spent almost all of that time within the Colville Reservation. I am a graduate, high school graduate from Omac High School. I attended the Willamette University and was a student at the Chamawa Indian School in uh, Port, uh, Salem, Oregon. I am a charter member of the Colville Business Council and from its inception, we have been very much interested in the development and the education of our young people. The tribe has spent a good deal of money toward helping students to continue their education. And I was a charter member of the Colville uh, Business Council and spent 19 years with that organization. I have been chief judge of the Colville Reservation for 20 years. Since the Congress of the United States feels that uh, the Indians on the reservations should uh, be very much a part of self-determination. The young people on this reservation have a wonderful opportunity to become a part of their own lives by educating themselves to the point where they can hold important jobs. There are a good many jobs on this reservation that could be filled by young people who can equip themselves and educate themselves to be able to take those positions. In my opinion, all of the young people in the schools today should think a good deal about equipping themselves to the point where they can take advantage of the jobs and work and do the jobs within their own reservation. My name is Bob Whitfield. I'm the director of Tribal Probation and Parole Services. My name is Bob Whitfield. I'm the director of Tribal Probation and Parole Services. In our department, there are also three other people. There is Glenn Raymond, the senior probation officer, Priscilla McCreggy, the junior probation officer, and secretary, Diane Sakula. Both myself and the senior probation officer have college degrees, plus several years of experience in probation and parole work, uh, experience in psychology, 
law and counseling techniques. The junior probation officer has some college training plus several years of experience as a caseworker with the Social Services Department of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The purpose of the Tribal Probation Parole Department is to deal with those children, not yet 18, who are in conflict with the law or who need the court's protection. These individuals are helped to lead a more satisfying life by utilizing the strengths of the client and the resources of the community. The department also has a responsibility to protect the public from the delinquent acts of children. The tribal probation office also provides supervision and counseling to adult offenders placed on probation by tribal or state courts or released on parole from penal institutions. Approximately one half of a typical day's work consists of office work such as writing reports for the court, corresponding with clients by letter or phone, contacting various agencies to develop resources to assist clients, plus interviewing and counseling clients and or their family. The rest of a typical day's work involves work in the field, such as investigating a person's background in order to write reports for the court, making periodic home visits with clients, contacting various agencies to develop resources to help individual clients, and attending court sessions. It would be nice if that was all, but problems arise at all hours of the day and night. A probation officer is on call 24 hours a day, and if a client is in trouble, his or her probation officer must respond. The tribal probation officer works closely with the tribal government and other tribal departments, such as law and order, employment, alcohol rehabilitation, mental health, and legal services, just to name a few, in an effort to assist tribal members and encourage them to refrain from illegal behavior. Crime prevention, therefore, requires a great deal of effort and cooperation from many tribal departments and the whole community. Probation officers seek out and coordinate these efforts. A little bit. Judge Orr's. This is the insert over Judge Orr's uh, talk. This is an insert uh, to go over Bob Whitfield's talk on uh, probation and parole. <laughs> Maybe you can make a phone call, Priscilla. Okay. Call time. 
the yeah. Call time and find out what time it is. Call Diana. Call Diana. Yeah, and then I'll get her answer in the phone. How do you call Diane? <laughs> she have another extension that you could call. Oh yeah, she's sixty-one. I don't know where it is. Cheers. Maybe you can walk in some files or something or pick some files up or Looks like she's good. Yeah, take that learning looks terrible. <laughs> you need a board. And there's Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> that is Uh, what is this one for again? Probation and parole. Okay, this is another insert for uh, probation and parole. What's the guy's name? Bob Witterfield. Bob Witterfield uh, narrating. Skip's going to try it again. Watch the lights. Tell us your name and your um, uh, title, your position first. Right now, just the leader of the table. So we can find it on the table when we're looking for it. Right now? My name is Eddie Palmentier. My position here at the Colville Indian Agency is that of superintendent. My name is Eddie Palmentier. My position here at the Colville Indian Agency is that of uh, superintendent. For those of you who may be interested in the possibility of a career in the Federal Civil Service and more specifically in the Bureau of Indian Affairs, I will explain the function of my position as superintendent. 
and also the function of the different branches of the Colville Indian Agency. As superintendent, I am the line officer of this agency at the reservation level. I take my direction and supervision directly from the Portland area director who is also the line officer of the regional office in Portland. The Portland area director takes his supervision and direction from the Commissioner of Indian Affairs at the central office at the Washington level of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The Commissioner in turn is a line officer taking his supervision and direction from the Secretary of the Interior. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has been a Bureau of the Department of the Interior since the Interior Department has been established in 1849. As the line officer at the agency level, the Bureau has three main functions. The first function being the administrator of Indian programs on the reservation. The U.S. Congress initiates Indian programs through the budgetary process and the BIA is the federal agency responsible for the administration of the majority of federal Indian programs. There are, however, other federal agencies who administer Indian programs such as the Department of Labor, the Economic Development Administration, the uh, Department of Health, Education and Welfare, as well as others. Those three are just uh, examples. Another responsibility of the uh, superintendency is that of exercising the trust responsibility over tribal resources. Whenever an individual or the tribe wishes to purchase property on the reservation, if they wish to sell property, if they wish to sell timber products or whatever the natural resource may be, it is the responsibility of the Bureau of Indian Affairs to approve such transactions. This is the exercise of the trust responsibility over the tribal resources. Another function of the superintendent and staff is to provide technical assistance to the Colville Confederated Tribes and their business council for various purposes, such as uh, assisting them in the management of uh, certain resources and programs, assisting them in uh, making up their decisions, uh, their day-to-day -day decisions, and also their long-range decisions on the development of the tribal resources. As a superintendent, I am the ad head administrator at this level, the reservation level, and we have uh, seven different branches uh, at the agency level. The first branch is the branch of reservation programs. The branch of reservation programs is responsible for assisting the tribes in administering their programs and planning the different programs on the reservation. The branch is also responsible for taking care of the budgetary process for the Colville Indian Agency. The second branch is the branch of education. The branch of education is responsible for administering the many scholarship and Indian grants to uh, eligible Indian students. Also, the branch of education works closely with the parent committees of the Johnson O'Malley programs in the local school districts, as well as other matters related to education. Another branch of the agency is the branch of roads. The roads branch is responsible for the maintenance of uh, approximately 1,200 miles of roads on our system on the reservation, and they are also responsible for the construction projects on the reservation. Another branch is the branch of forestry. This is our largest branch because of the fact that 90% of the tribal resource comes from the sale of forest products. Our branch of forestry is responsible for the administration of the forestry program. They are responsible for timber sales, for fire control, for the protection of the forest resource, and they are also responsible for uh, the uh, 
Inchileum uh, sub-agency, which is a forest uh, headquarters. We also have a forestry headquarters in Mitchell Point, and we are also contemplating creating a ranger station in the Dizitel area. Another important branch is the branch of natural resources. The branch of natural resources is responsible for all realty activities. They handle all probate proceedings, and they handle all leasing and uh, land acquisition and disposal for the individual members of the tribe as well as the Colville Business Council. Another important uh, branch is the branch of credit. The branch of credit is responsible for the handling of the loan program of the Colville Business Council. They handle loans mainly for housing, construction, and land purchase as well as other smaller consumer type loans to individual members of the tribe. And of course the uh, last branch is the branch of administration. The branch of administration is uh, responsible for the local administrative functions of the Colville Indian Agency. We have a uh, sub-branch of property and supply, plant management responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of all federal facilities under the jurisdiction of the Colville Agency. We have an individual Indian monies account section responsible for maintaining the local accounts of the Colville Confederated Tribes as well as numerous uh, thousands of accounts of individual members of the tribe. We also have a, a sub-branch of housing who assists the housing authority in the administration of the housing program and also uh, assists the credit department in, uh, in uh, getting uh, appraisals and uh, doing the uh, supervision or the inspections of the, the different housing construction projects through the credit program. This was just a brief outline of my function as superintendent and the function of the Colville Indian Agency. If any of uh, you students watching this film uh, have any interest whatsoever in, uh, in pursuing a career in the Bureau of Indian Affairs, I would certainly encourage it. Thank you. That was a little longer than five minutes. <laughs> you like a pro already. <laughs> Oh, my name is George M. Davis, and I work for the Colville Tribe as a public service director. Okay. Now, when you do your presentation, you probably should start it the same way, so that it gives you name and position again when you start your presentation. That's good. That's why I started it. Good. Okay. Uh, and when you talk, yeah. right into your... Oh, okay. I'll probably read the first part of it, you know, if that's okay. Any time? My name is George Davis. I work as the Public Service Program Director for the Colville Confederated Tribes. My main responsibility is to provide program assistance and direction to the 18 people-oriented programs that the Colville Confederated Tribes provides to their membership. One of my main responsibilities is the bridging of the programs with the legislative branch, the Colville Business Council. With so many programs in operation, the Council and the various committee looks to this position to ensure the continuous operation of the programs on a day-to-day -day basis. It is my responsibility to handle these day-to-day -day matters to allow the committees of the Council to place more emphasis on their work. Matters concerning policy or change in direction of a program need Council direction and is usually presented to the proper committee on its regular meeting day through my office. With such a diversity of programs, the numerous projects and grants, and the vast area that encompasses the Colville Reservation, 
I operate with the greatest amount of program delegation to each program director that is possible. I work directly for Mel White, who is the executive director for the Colville Confederated Tribes. Mel White is the person who has the direct responsibility to the total council. Under Mike's supervision are three directors. One is the director for the administration of the tribe. Uh, the second director is in charge of the resources and the economic enterprises that the tribe has undertaken. And the third one is the public service director, which is the position I hold. There is a total of 18 programs under my supervision. These programs are in three categorical areas. They are law and order, education, and community outreach. The programs in the law and order area are as follows. Law and order, which includes enforcement, incarceration, and a court system. We have a program entitled Legal Services. It employs two attorneys, and it acts as the public defender in the court system for Colville members and provides legal services for felonies and civil suits that any tribal member may be faced with. We have a parole and probation program. They provide parole and probation services for those people that reside on the Culver Reservation. The Highway Safety Program is the last program in this, in this categorical area, and it provides assistance in making our highways more safe and also supervises three ambulances which service the Colville Reservation. The second area that I, I, I will call education programs, and even though they're not all education, we tend to group them because it, it deals more with education and employment and career awareness. Adult education is one of these programs, and it coordinates with the various community colleges educational programs that the adult members of the, of the tribe feel and desire to have. The second program is the learning centers, and they are basically providing new curriculums for uh, the people in the various districts to use to improve their own skills. We have two summer programs. One is the Twin Lakes Youth Program, and the second one is the YCC Program. That's the Youth Conservation Corps. The Twin Lakes Youth Program is a summer program for children up at Twin Lakes, which provides both a remedial education program and a cultural enrichment program for the younger Colville tribal members. This is usually for those children that are 15 years or younger. The YCC program is basically a work-oriented program and it introduces the youth to the world of work. The fourth program in the education area is the operation of the Pascal Sherman Indian School. The Pascal Sherman Indian School is a tribally operated school and has its own tribal uh, school board and it serves approximately 170 students in grades 1 through 8. About 130 of the 170 students are residential students and 30 uh, commute daily. It is one of the, uh, it's one of the most progressive tribally operated Indian schools and the education programs are extremely advanced at Pascal Sherman. The adult vocational training program is a bureau program that has been contracted by the tribe and does provide opportunities for adults to go out and join uh, to learn vocational skills. The last program in the education area is the Employment Assistance Office. Even though this does not deal directly with education, we have grouped it in this category because it does bring about a career awareness not only to employment assistance but to the other educational programs and gives an opportunity for those programs to become familiar with those jobs that are available on the reservation. The third categorical program area is what I call outreach. And we have several programs in this area and they deal in various technical fields such as uh, nutrition, medical, or uh, extension services. The first program is the largest program, and that is the Indian Community Action Program. We call it the ICAP program. 
Hank Raymond is the director of the ICAP program and he manages between seven and ten programs depending upon what time of the year it is. But in those areas under ICAP, he operates a Head Start program, a daycare center, he, he has senior feeding programs, senior transportation programs, runs a thrift store in OMAC. He has many programs under his direction. Second program is the Maternal Child Health Program. This is primarily a health program for mothers who are either giving birth or have just given birth to children and they provide services in both pre- and postnatal um, uh, counseling services. The CHR program is what we call the Community Health Representative. We have Community Health Representatives in each of the four districts. The Community Health uh, Representative, the CHR, is a very flexible person and, and does many different things depending upon what the needs are of the community at that time. It can be as varied as much as when an elderly person is sick and they can't fill the wood box in the winter time, they make that kind of a task their job. They try to make people feel comfortable, they try to deliver services from all the other programs to the individuals that have not the ability to come to the office. Fourth program in this area is housing. And again, we have five or six programs that are under the direction of the housing director. Our primary emphasis at this time is on the HUD housing. We are constructing 120 houses under the uh, financing uh, by HUD, and these houses are being built in all. The Willamette University and was a student at the Chamawa Indian School in uh, Port uh, Salem, Oregon. I am a charter member of the Colville Business Council, and from its inception, we have been very much interested in the development and the education of our young people. The tribe has spent a good deal of money toward helping students to continue their education. And I was a charter member of the Colville Business Council and spent 19 years with that organization. I have been chief judge of the Colville Reservation for 20 years. Since the Congress of the United States feels that uh, the Indians on the reservations should uh, be very much a part of self-determination, the young people on this reservation have a wonderful opportunity to become a part of their own lives by educating themselves to the point where they can hold important jobs. There are a good many jobs on this reservation that could be filled by young people who can equip themselves and educate themselves to be able to take those positions. In my opinion, all of the young people in the schools today should think a good deal about equipping themselves to the point where they can take advantage of the jobs and work and do the jobs within their own reservation. My name is Bob Whitfield. I'm the director of Tribal Probation and Parole Services. All right, 
my name is Bob Whitfield. I'm the director of Tribal Probation Parole Services. In our department, there are also three other people. There is Robert Orr. I am Albert Orr, Chief Judge of the Colville Confederated Tribes. Okay, and when you start, we want you to start with the same thing. Start your name. Oh. Are you ready for me to start? I am Albert Orr, Chief Judge of the Colville Confederated Tribes. I am a member and an enrolled member of the Colville Confederated Tribes. I am 71 years of age and have spent almost all of that time within the Colville Reservation. I am a graduate, high school graduate from Omac High School I attended Glenn Raymond, the senior probation officer, Priscilla McCreggy, the junior probation officer, and a secretary, Diane Sakula. Both myself and the senior probation officer have college degrees, plus several years of experience in probation and parole work, uh, experience in psychology, law, and counseling techniques. The junior probation officer has some college training plus several years of experience as a caseworker with the Social Services Department of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The purpose of the Tribal Probation Parole Department is to deal with those children, not yet 18, who are in conflict with the law or who need the court's protection. These individuals are helped to lead a more satisfying life by utilizing the strengths of the client and the resources of the community. The department also has a responsibility to protect the public from the delinquent acts of children.